I would like to remind everyone to please be sure that our cell phones are turned to the off or vibrate position and also please be advised our city council meetings are broadcast on Comcast Channel 99, AT&T Uverse and the City of Gaston YouTube. This meeting of the Gaston City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Tolls. Here. Councilman Williams is absent today. Councilman Worthy. Here. Back. Here. Wilson. Here. Cannon. Here. And Reed. Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Councilman Cannon to lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for the day that you've given us to be here today to do your business for the city, God. We pray, God, if someone's here that don't know you, God, that they'll come to know God today or this week, God, please. We pray for the sick people, God, the people that's not with us today, the people that's lost loved ones, God. Just comfort them. We love you, God, and I ask you to be with this meeting today and let it go and orderly, have an orderly meeting today, God. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have an update from uh, the EMA. Mr. Tanner, please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it had gotten there for a while where I was always the bad news bringer. So here's a couple times in a row I'm getting to bring good news. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. Our, our positivity rate in the county right now is 6.8%. That continues to trend down, which is, is good. Uh, public health has told us that their uh, desired target range is 1% to 2% across the county. Um, so that's what we're trying to, to strive for. Uh, still do the, the same things that we've been doing to try to, to prevent the spread. Um, we have uh, 84,000 roughly 531 uh, vaccinations that have been administered countywide now, which is a, a pretty good number. Uh, that basically comes down to uh, first shots and second shots, and then also any boosters that may have been administered. Uh, it's flu season, so get your flu vaccine if you haven't done that yet. Local pharmacies and the health department can provide those for you. Uh, insurance covers most of them uh, at no cost. We continue to get a lot of questions about booster shots. Um, this is the latest guidance from uh, the CDC as well as both of the manufacturers for uh, the commonly used Moderna and uh, Pfizer vaccine. So for individuals who received a Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, the following groups are eligible for a booster shot at six months or more after their initial series. Anybody age 65 or older, anyone who is age 18, and over that lives in a long-term care facility, 18 and older who have underlying medical conditions, and also 18 and older who work or live in high-risk uh, settings, congregate housing being one of those. If there's several uh, family members that live together or, uh, for example, students in a college dorm, that type thing, uh, you, they would be eligible for um, the booster shots. So for the nearly 15 million individuals who received the, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, booster shots are now also recommended for those who are 18 and older, uh, as long as they were vaccinated over two months ago. Uh, th this vaccine that is given as a booster can be either Pfizer, uh, Pfizer Moderna, or the Johnson & Johnson one shot. We've been getting a lot of questions about whether you got to have the exact same vaccine that you took before or can I just do the one shot with Johnson and Johnson. So it's kind of mix and match. It's okay according to the CDC to be able to do that. As was mentioned in uh, the pre-council session, uh, Ms. Gaither will have updates uh, that we will be given in person 
uh, on the first Tuesday uh, of the, the next two months, which today's one of them, and then the first Tuesday in December. And then we'll reevaluate that policy after we come back after the first of the year. Some news that's just happened in the last few days. Uh, emergency authorization was given uh, for the use of Pfizer vaccine for the prevention of COVID for children ages five to 11. Um, and that's, that's a big demographic. Uh, the effectiveness that was seen in those was roughly equivalent to individuals who were in the 16 to 25 year old age bracket and the vaccine was found to be 90.7% effective in, presenting, in preventing COVID in children ages five to 11. Uh, the vaccine safety was studied in approximately 3,100 children age five through 11. And as this is an ongoing study, no serious side effects have been detected, but as additional time passes, there may be uh, some updates that we have to, get, to give with that. School numbers through October 28th uh, were down again, which is, is good. Tallis City Schools reported uh, five cases. Etowah County has 15 cases. And then the Gadsden City Schools again, as they did last week, they have less than five. And then with the holidays coming up, be smart, continue to do the same things that we've been preaching since February 26th. Uh, proper hand washing, social distancing, and if you don't know the vaccination status of, of folks, of course, the least regrets to wear the mask. Uh, we're coming into that time of year when we're going to be visiting with extended family who may be traveling from a different area. Um, you know, it may make for some really great holiday pictures 15 years from now when grandkids sit down to look at the pictures and say, you know, was everybody doing surgery on this day? Because everybody's wearing masks. Um, but it, it is the course of least regret with the holidays coming. And with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions. I have one. Yes, sir. Uh, with us being at a positive rate of 6.8%, we are not in the high category of transmission anymore. No, sir. We've actually dropped down two categories now. Uh, we're in the moderate uh, rate, which is, again, vastly improved where we were uh, back in the spring. You know, we were... It, Red was the highest color that they had, but if they could develop one higher than red, that's where we, we were. That, that's where we were at. Right. So uh, we're still shooting for that one to two percent, but we are very pleased with the six point eight. Good question. All right. Thank you again. Thank y'all. Chief. Chief Reed. Good morning, all. Good morning. Uh, my report will be very brief. We ran one last week, one confirmed COVID. We had no PUIs. We had one confirmed COVID. All of my firefighters right now are healthy from COVID. We don't have anybody out from that. We do have some people out for surgeries and whatnot, but COVID is not behind us by any means, but we're doing much better with it. We have opened up our training program to in-person training at the fire department again and going back out into the schools and the community. We're still trying to social distance, but we're business as usual. So, okay. Any questions? Very good. Good news. Good news. Thank y'all. Thank, Thank you. We will continue on our agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt, approve the minutes of the finance uh, committee, the work session, and the city council meeting that was held on October the 26th. So move. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payments of accounts for the week of October the 22nd through the 28th. So move. Second. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Proclamation. Unfinished business, we have none today. Uh, this is the time and place as advertised to conduct a public hearing allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property located at 1208 Windsor Street in District 1, uh, Raimondo, David, Valencio, Cornardo, Laura L. and Nancy L. Woodsmall being the last known owners. 
Is there anyone speaking in opposition to this resolution? Anyone speak in favor? Madam President, I'm Brian Harbison with the building department. Based on recent improvements, we're going to ask that this ta uh, case be tabled for 30 days. Thank you. Okay. okay. On the uh, building department's recommendation, uh, uh, I move that we table this for 30 days. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to table the resolution for 30 days, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to table for 30 days. Our next public hearing is a resolution of abatement on nuisance on property located at 811 Midway Avenue in District 2. And this is Steve Weaver, also known as uh, Steve Weaver, being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this? Is there anyone to speak in favor? Mayor, you can pass it on down to uh, Councilman Bath. Madam President, this case involves a mobile home that's uh, in the process of being demolished. The owner pulled a permit last May, uh, as you can tell in the picture, still not finished. We're asking for a resolution today yeah, to abate this nuisance. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to adopt. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our next resolution is uh, order an abatement of nuisance on property located at 616 Polk Street in District 2. And this is Billy Wise and wife Gail Wise being the last known owners. Is there anyone to speak in? opposition to this resolution. Councilman Bag, is there anyone speaking in favor? Madam President, we filed this case in June of this year. There have been no improvements. There was a building permit taken out in July. We're asking for a resolution today to abate this nuisance. What is the pledge of the council? Is this a, a total demo, Brian? Are you on a demo this uh, demo? We'll look at it if, uh, if, if the numbers uh, work. Okay. Move to abate. Second. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our next public hearing is a resolution on abatement of nuisance of a commercial building on property located at 3400 Mutual Drive in District 6. And this is Philip Delp subject to mortgage in favor of Barney H. Leach being the last known owner. Is there anyone to speak in uh, opposition to this resolution? Hmm. Is there anyone speak in favor? Madam President, this case involves uh, a track of property just in excess of four acres. There are at least seven large vacant industrial uh, buildings on the property. The fire department has been on site at least a couple of times in the last few months uh, fighting some some fires. There's uh, been a large, large contingency of homeless folks trying to stay there. We have done everything we could to uh, to secure this property and we'll continue to do that. We filed the case in April. There have been no improvements. We're asking for a resolution today to abate the nuisance. Thank you. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to abate. Second. <clears throat> Clerk, will you take the vote? 
Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our final public hearing is a resolution on abatement of nuisance on property located at 703B Agricultural Drive in District 7. And this is Brian Allen Gore, possible right of redemption to Hazel Stevens and HGM Holding LLC being the last known owners. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this resolution? Madam President, there's a gentleman out there. All right, if you'll come forward, please, and give your name and address. Brian Allen Gore, uh, 1712 Main Street. Okay. Do I need to just speak on it? Or? Yeah, uh -huh. okay. yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm in the process of getting it taken care of. I need about 90 more days. I've got a company that's finally, with all the stuff that they were doing in down, down south in Louisiana and everything with the hurricanes and stuff, they're back up here now, the company I was going to have to use to, to abate the house. So within 90 to 120 days, the house will be taken care of fully. So, I mean, that way it'll, the responsibility will rely on me. I'll, I'll take care of that for sure. Okay, you say, and you're you're be responsible for tearing it down. Yes, yes, absolutely. Huh, hold, hold, yeah. Just go So I'm not. Yeah. I'm for the abatement, but I'm going to go ahead and get it done myself. I'll have okay. it done. Well, I had well, the permit pro pulled on it for a year, I think, mm -hmm. uh, and we finally got it cleaned out enough, and it's not going to be livable. It's not habitable, so we're going to have to tear it down. Yes. Yeah. Well, we usually, well, not we usually, we don't give uh, 90 to uh, that 100 days or however many, but since you're going to uh, tear it down, we're still, pro we're still going to, uh, I guess, with the approval. We'll vote on it. Okay. We're going to go ahead and abate the problem. Yeah, because yeah, 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 it's not yeah. habitable, okay. guys. It's no. not It's not able. You can get with uh, Mr. Harbison yeah. after we uh, do the motion to abate. Okay. And he'll tell you the procedure. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, no guys. Problem. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. Madam President, we filed this case in October of last year. There have been no improvements. There was a building permit taken out in February. Uh, no action has been taken on that. We're asking today for a resolution to abate the nuisance. Uh, concerning the, uh, the, the plan the owner presented, we will issue a demolition permit those are good for 30 days okay. and uh, so he he would need to begin that process within that period thank you okay all right what is the pleasure of the council move to obey second clerk will you take the vote those in favor to adopt the resolution let it be known as saying aye aye, aye. those opposed motion carries to adopt uh, we have a resolution here to authorize special use permit to the dish wireless, and this is for installation of equipment. And so we'll ask you to come and during our discussion and tell us about it. Madam President, Council and Mayor, David Andrews with CMS, the city's consultant for wireless telecommunication. Uh, the resolution before you is an application made by Dish Wireless. Uh, if, if you will remember, we've already had a couple applications come through for Dish Wireless. They're a new going to be a new service provider in Gaston and Etowah County. Uh, they will be equal to, to AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, your current providers that you have. Um, this is the third site, and this site is on the west side of Gaston at 4290 Old Pump Station Road. Um, at that location, there's an existing 150-foot monopole tower. Uh, DISH is requesting to place their equipment at 110 foot on that tower, and and they will be they will be this will be a new service point for them. So this site will be providing uh, service to the interstate area in West Gaston. Uh, CMS has reviewed the recommendation and uh, recommends approval by the council. And there will be several more of these DISH wireless sites come through in the next few weeks. So uh, we may try to get one or two each week uh, for DISH wireless so they can get coverage across Gaston. Are there any questions from the councilman? 
I yes, have a couple. Uh, when, when we approve these, do they start immediately or have they already completed the ones that we've approved? No, sir, they're in the process. So once you approve this special use permit, uh, th th most times they already have a contractor uh, scheduled for these. So we ensure that the contractors has all the, the permits and license that they're, that's appropriate for the job. And once they have those permits and license, they start construction. So usually from the time the special use permit is approved, you're looking anywhere from a month to six months uh, for it to be completely built out. And, and it's just basically dependent on the schedule of the, uh, the service provider. Uh, now, once you approve this, they can pull their building permit tomorrow and they can start work tomorrow and they can have it done by the end of, end of the week if, if, if they want to. Uh, but typically it takes a few months. And you said all of Gadsden, will this go down Rainbow Drive and Club View and Country Club? Co correct. This is a new service provider, so they're going to, they're, 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 Build out plan is to cover the entire Gaston and Etowah County. Uh, just from they're starting out from co location sites, they're not building any new towers right now uh, in Gaston. Uh, so, Gaston's got a lot of towers already in place, so there's really no need to build new towers to get their initial build out plan to cover the city. So, so they have a build out plan and they're they're starting, it looks to me, they're starting around the, the peripheral edges of the city and they're going to they'll work, work in. But, but yes, sir, the entire city and county should have coverage at the end of the project. You know, we've talked about it before. I, I still have poor coverage at my house and uh, off of Rainbow Drive down in uh, Country Club. I, I get one bar, two bars. It's just astonishing that in this day and age that there's not better coverage. I just don't know if I understand that. We've talked about that, but I still don't get why there's Verizon doesn't have better coverage. It's just uh, it, they either doesn't have a site close enough to cover you or there's uh, ge uh, uh, geographical issues that are that are keeping the sites that they have from covering you. Uh, if you have low bars on your phone, typically it's a, it's a service issue. In other words, you don't have very good service. Mm -hmm. It's not a capacity issue where there's so many people that your service is slow. So yeah. the, the service that you're, you're talking about or the, the lack of service that you were talking about would have to be from, from a site that's either too far away or there's ge uh, geographical issues that are keeping you from getting good service. So, you know, it, it, it would probably be in Verizon's best interest to, to build a new site or co-locate on a new site to cover that area. Okay. If you could give me the information to contact them, I would, I'd love to contact uh, Verizon. Yes, yeah, sir. Verizon now, uh, they, they require you to, to file complaints or to contact them through an app or through your service provider, oh. but I'll get you that information. You can do it directly from your phone, either on your Verizon app, or you can dial a number on your phone and get in touch with their customer service. Oh, thank you, I appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So move. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries to adopt. Our next item is a resolution authorizing expenditure of coronavirus state and local recovery funds. And this involves an agreement with the Gaston Etowah Habitat for Humanity for the construction of affordable housing and a qualified sensor track for disproportionately impacted populations and communities, and the amount is $250,000. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So move. Second. Any, any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. This is to provide, the next uh, resolution is authorizing an agreement with uh, Milliman and Company, and this is to provide reports relating to post-employment benefits to comply with the GASB 75, and it includes the actual very valuation report for fiscal year ending September the 20th, 2021, 
and roll forward valuation report for fiscal year ending September the 30th, 2022. And the amount is $16,000. The chair would entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So move. Second. Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our next resolution is to authorize a agreement with uh, Zand Corporations doing business as one app way. And this is for an Etowah County EMA app to be utilized for public education, alerts and notification and public safety. And the amount is $900 per year. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. We have a first reading, and this is an ordinance amending the fiscal year 2022 budget. And this is to reflect receipts and appropriation of the Edward Byrd Memorial Justice Assistant Grant. And this is totaling $35,458 to be used for the purchase of a new x-ray system for the bomb squad and for training in the NIBRS compliance. Uh, this ordinance has been presented today for first reading and the council will vote on it next week. Is there any new business? Yes, Madam President, I have one. It's requested by the engineering department. It's a, a resolution authorizing agreement with CDG Engineers and Associates Incorporated. Ask for unanimous consent. So moved. Second. Clerk. Move to adopt. Those in favor to consider oh. the resolution today as an item of new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Now move for adoption. Second. Discussion and this this is this proposal is for what? This is proposals for a study for the uh, West Megan Boulevard, North Eleventh Street, and Tuscaloosa Avenue area for drainage. All right, has to do with drainage. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Is there any more? No business. I have one, Madam President. This comes from, also comes from the engineering department. It's a resolution awarding bid number 3460, Community Development Street Resurfacing Project. I would ask for unanimous consent. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution as an item of new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Move for adoption. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Do we have any department reports? At this time, we have uh, two citizen uh, requests. We have uh, first is Larry Suttles for city services. <coughs> Good morning. My name is Larry Suttles. I live at 2322 Hill Avenue. Okay. I have uh, something I want to talk about, a couple of things. Uh, one of them is I like to uh, give thanks to uh, Captain Jackson here for some things we, him and I have been working on. And I mean, he's been doing a great, wonderful job for the city. And also, uh, Mr. Williams for the engineering about the flooding that we are all addressing and we I think the citizens are guessing and really appreciate that um, There's some other issues I wanted to ask Mr. Williams, but I'm gonna deal with him on it uh, At a later date, but uh, Like I said uh, when I first talked to y'all about these flooding areas I was gonna hold the city reliable, liable for everything that's need to be done. And uh, people passing the buck, it just, it, it just don't get it with me. 
I will follow up behind you. And I have been talking to Mr. Williams about this situation since I brought this up several months ago. And like uh, Officer Jackson and Dare Stains, we done brought up. I brought up some with Miss uh, Nelson. She's been on it. So I really like to appreciate, uh, thank them for the job they have been doing. And there's one more uh, solution that I would really been going back and forth with about is the trash. Yes, you and I. Now, <laughs> I did some research with Eddie Wall. And they said they have uh, they trash and they sew it combined. Uh, they still have a, a few little problems about trash, but I just I find it very difficult if we got people going around checking, uh, making sure people uh, houses are done with city ordinance and stuff. And they got a bunch of trash laying in the yard, and we can't do nothing about that. We can get them a notice, and then I think it, 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 if necessary, they can be fine, because they don't want to get a trash can. And my thing is, if they go pay the, uh, if, if they go pay the trash first to get their water cut on, it will solve the whole, uh, solve a lot of these problems. Because, are you, you know, are you saying put the um, <clears throat> trash pay bit on the water bill? Either that, or either we reverse reverse the situation where you go get the water on, and then the, late, the people down there tell you, "Well, go to the trash." If you tell me that, guess where I'm going? I'm going to the left field. I I'll even get take on another bill. I'll refer you that to the. T uh, I'll refer you to the city attorney on that one. Oh, that's fine. I deal with Mr. Lee. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate the job that everybody's doing, but, and Mayor, I had to get rid of that car. You didn't take your ride in. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Soul. Uh, Ms. Francis Irene, Papa Collins. Well, as they say, say the best for last. Absolutely. I, I'm very happy to be here today, and um, Honorable Mayor, Madam Chairwoman, Chairwoman, and also Council. You know, every year we try to upgrade or we try to share information about Papa Cause. Uh, Papa Cause is from Gadsden, Alabama, and he just happened to be the friend, or should I say the best friend of Santa Claus, that was actually created by John Sandridge. Now, we made the first debut back in 1998 when Mayor Steve Means was in office here, and we had a terrific turnout. Since that time, we've traveled to different cities throughout the country. Well, we even have gone to uh, Des Moines, Iowa to take Papa Cod out of the South into other states to see how he was received. And um, the beautiful thing about that, the children did the same thing they did right here in Alabama. They mobbed Papa Cos. You've seen him in parades. You've seen him. Last year, we have we gave, uh, in, even though there were a lot of things that were going on and the children were shut down and the cities were shut down, the world was shut down, Papa Cos was still active, assisting the children. Our children are truly our future and why I'm here today. And you will notice in your folders, there is no mistake, there is not a sheet in there that has anything to do with asking for money, okay? We want your blessings. We're getting ready to have, as you can see, the village of dreams. And since Papa Cause is right here from Owls Hollow Road, we need your blessing because this was the birthplace of Papa Cause. We do have other cities throughout the state of Alabama that's hearing what we're having to say about this village. But let me tell you a little bit about the village, if I may. Um, 
Of course you know that the mission of Papa Cause is as a proud Alabamian, we are to inspire our children, our teenagers, and adults to use their creativity and imagination. That has been the focus and the guidance of Papa Cause and the Number Two Pencil Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization. But one of the things that we also are going to do is we're going to create a village. Ah, a village. And it's going to be in, a, in this town. <clears throat> the village is going to be where it will be the only town where there will be two heroes. And that is Santa Claus and Papa Claus. And why? Because they both bring joy and happiness. Papa Claus's main interest is educating our children and keeping them educated and keeping them motivated and keeping them happy. And that's the same principle that Santa Claus does uh, usually on Christmas. The difference is Papa Claus does it all year round. And this particular village will begin November the 1st, not this year, of course, but and will extend through uh, January 1st of the following year. Now, you have in your folder some information about the village. Um, I'm not going to read all of this because you council people have a whole lot to read and a whole lot to do. I just want to share this one particular thought with you. You know, you've heard it said that it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes a village to raise a city. And the village that we're talking about creating is one where people can come and have um, not only entertainment, not only be educated, not only will they experience miraculous happenings, but they will also, there will also be, if you look at the back page, what this village will include. Now, this village will be the village of Papa Claus and Santa Claus, and guess what? Santa Claus is going to come to this village with Papa Claus from that time period up until January. Hmm, that's a little bit unusual because Santa usually goes back to the North Pole after Christmas. But this time, this city, this village will have these particular shops. Number one, a library salon. Number two, an imagination and a creativity school. Number three, it'll have a bank of giving and receiving. Ah, that's a little different. Number four, it'll have a hope store. Number five, you got to have a prayer garden. Number six, the entertainment corral. And this is where live performances will be done that will engage our art departments, our drama departments, our music, and just assist the children to use their creativity and imagination. But you can't have all that if you don't have a Pony Express postal, some one or some ones to get the message out and to also make sure that Santa and Papa Causes letters are given to the children. And then finally, I don't know how many of you have ever been on a stage coach. I haven't. No, I hadn't got there yet. But if you watch westerns, which I do from time to time, I love those westerns, you will see the stage coaches. Now, you know there was always a holdup. We do have in mind having a real stage coach, which will be a thrill for the children, not only for the children, but it will be a thrill for the adults as well. So we're talking about bringing joy, peace, love, happiness for our children. And guess what? There's always a little bit of children in each of us adult children that enjoys to be enlightened. So what we're asking for is simple. And that is your blessing for this village as Papa Cause comes from Owls Hollow Road from Gadsden, Alabama. You did not see a sheet there that asked for any money, did you? And that's a change. Because we believe that if you have a dream, as all of you have had dreams, if you didn't, you wouldn't be sitting where you are right now. And 
with those dreams, there comes imagination and creativity. So give us your support. And by the way, thank you so much for the proclamation that you gave to Papa Koth. We want you to know that we're in the fifth annual celebration of Papa Koth's day. And by the way, you are invited. And by the way, it will be at the Cultural Arts Center this year. And by the way, we will have chili in collaboration with the chili cook-off. Now, we didn't win the last time, but look out, cook chili cook-off this time, because we're going to have some special Papa Cause chili. I want to thank each of you, councilmen and councilwoman, for your support, your financial help through the years. We want to put Papa Cause International, not just here in Gaston and in Alabama. I'm going to share this with you. The other day, I was on TikTok. Anybody know what TikTok is? Yeah, I know you do. Okay, I was on TikTok, and I saw this message, and it really touched my heart. In fact, it touched one million hearts. And what it was, this lady, African American, was actually filling out an application with a child, looked to be a, probably about three years old, that had fallen asleep in her arms. Well, she was holding the child, and she was trying to fill out the application. Now, here comes a papa who happened to be a Caucasian. He assisted her by grabbing the child. He didn't just grab the child. He lovingly placed the child on his shoulder to do what any papa would do for a grandchild. When I saw that, and the beautiful thing about it, they were from Alabama. I've traveled many places throughout the world. There's no place like home. Thank you so much, and we look forward to getting your support. If we could get a letter from each one of the council and the mayor to give us your support one more time about who Papa Cause is and what he does for the city, what he intends to do, we would be so grateful. Thank you so much for allowing me to come. And by the way, this is home for Francis Irene, too. <laughs> Thank you. OK, at this time, we'll have uh, remarks by the uh, council. Uh, first, I'd just like to say congratulations to uh, Councilman Back. He's a grandfather again. Thank you. Uh, so we'll let you go first. Oh, thank you. Madam President, uh, we are very excited. We have a new granddaughter, uh, excuse me, grandson. We already have a granddaughter. We have a, a grandson. Everybody's healthy, and we're just, we feel very blessed for that. So thank you for mentioning that. Uh, this is on behalf of uh, Councilman Williams, who wasn't able to be here today. He asked me to share something uh, in his district. Bradley Mullinax, who's the pastor at James Memorial, Baptist Church wanted to give a uh, just a, a, a thank you to one of our city employees that picks up debris in the community around uh, James Memorial. Uh, apparently, Fred is uh, does his job uh, exceptionally well. Uh, all the residents know him, like him, they appreciate what he does, and Pastor Mullinax just felt like Fred should have a proper recognition. So, on behalf of uh, Pastor Mullinax and James Memorial Baptist Church and the folks up in that area in District 2 for Councilman Williams. We, we do want to thank uh, city employee Fred that works on the debris truck that apparently goes the extra mile to make sure that his job is done uh, correctly. So just wanted to pass that on to everybody and share that with you. And uh, that's all I have today, Madam President. All right. Councilman Wilson. Uh, yes, ma'am. Just a couple of quick thank yous. Um, as a part of our River Fest event that uh, we put on over the weekend, obviously the water or the weather didn't really cooperate with us, but it was a great time for those of you guys who were able to come out. But really quick, thank you to Erin Patterson in the legal department for all the work that she put in to getting the permits and the ALDOT permits and all that in place. Uh, the sheriff's department d provided um, 
traffic control on Friday night. The Gadsden Police Department, we hired a couple of officers to work security the night before the event. The fire department provided uh, first responders and a little triage tent there the night of in case there were any sort of um, medical emergencies. Luckily, there was not, to my knowledge. Uh, the Public Works Department gave us, uh, let us borrow the barricades and the drums to create the barriers for all the event space. And again, ALDOT, the local regional office who gave us permission to use the area underneath the bridge. The engineering department who helped us determine that the city did not own that property and that we needed to call ALDOT. Um, we literally, in Parks and Rec, um, Literally, guys, y'all don't understand. We were just some private citizens that were trying to put on a concert and do something good, and we could not have done this without the help of so many people, including sponsors. Um, it just, I wish people understood what it takes to pull off something as simple as a concert. You don't just show up and, and there's a concert in the streets. So um, we're excited. We learned a lot. Uh, primarily that we're probably going to move the date of this up next year a few weeks to avoid the rain but thank you again for everybody who helped us put this thing together it didn't go unnoticed and it couldn't have been done without y'all um, and again I'll go ahead and say congratulations uh, to Councilman Back but more specifically to my friend his daughter Kirkland and my friend Morgan Cunningham his son-in-law um, I'm super excited for you guys and I can't wait to meet uh, Jack Aris Cunningham am I John, saying that John. oh I'm sorry John Aris Cunningham. Okay, great. Um, also, I'll give kudos to Councilman Johnny Cannon. His uh, granddaughter pitched back-to-back -back, uh, fast pitch softball no-hitters over the weekend in the tournament he was talking about. So congratulations you. uh, to your granddaughter. And uh, last but not least, as I've said on social media many a time, good morning to everyone but the Houston Astros. <laughs> Is that it, Councilman Wilson? Yes, ma'am. Well, you were being nice. See how I'm nice to you? <laughs> Councilman Cannon. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to thank everybody that came out to Wall Street Thursday night. It did rain on us, but we had a good crowd, and the drive through was perfect. We had two lines. As far as I know, there wasn't any trouble there. I appreciate all the police officers that came. We had them directing traffic, and Captain Jackson was there. I talked with him, and... Uh, you know, it was just a great turnout out there. Uh, Councilman uh, Wilson might not appreciate me because I'm fixing to talk about Turntine and Harrelson right this minute right now. I want to give him kudos for uh, the job well done in Turntine and Harrelson this weekend on the candy giveaway for Halloween. Me and my wife rode down there. Everything went smooth. He had the police officers down there. There was tons and tons of kids walking around down there. When I first turned on a turn time or Harris, whichever one it was, there was cars parked from one end of the road to the other. I told my wife, somebody must be having a party here. And I got down here and looked, and it was all the cars parked. The people let, let their kids out, and they was all with them. I didn't see any children that was unattended down there during any of that. And I just want to say I appreciate them for doing that down there this week. And, all the residents down on Turn Town Harrison and the streets around there. That's all I have. All right. And Councilman uh, Worthy? Yes, Madam President. I was asked to make an announcement from the finance director, Lisa Rossa, that uh, the checks will be available by Thanksgiving for the, uh, the bonuses from the uh, American Rescue Plan. Uh, so I wanted to make, let me say that again, to all the employees, the checks will be before Thanksgiving. You will get the checks, the $3,000 for full-time and $1,500 for part-time. So, uh, so you can stop all the rumors. They will be paid. And then I want to talk about we had a nice turnout yesterday uh, with Sunday. Uh, uh, for the uh, vaccine clinic that we did at Macedonia Baptist Church and right there at Midtown where they administered the shots. Uh, we had 29 people to get shots and I was one of them, I got my booster. So uh, we asked the people, if you haven't had your booster shot, please uh, go take your booster shots. We see that the numbers are down, way down, but uh, we're not out of this pandemic yet. So please, uh, let's don't get too comfortable 
continue doing what we're doing so we could get back to normal. Thank you. All right, Mayor. Okay, if there's nothing else, I call for a motion to adjourn.